guys, welcome to my MIT App Inventor tutorial on making a calculator with a twist. Before I get started, I just want to thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking it out. Subscribe if you like it, and hit that like button if you like it. And, on that note, I do videos every Tuesday and Thursday if you want to stay in good watching condition with this channel. Also, comment down below if you want to see a tutorial for anything else on MIT App Inventor. I'm also teaching myself Python at the moment, so we'll be getting some of those videos sooner or later. But let's get started with this video. Alright, here, first off, we're going to need to add five horizontal arrangements I think I can order add five I really hope I can add five does it fit below here nope it didn't add well that sucks so what we're gonna do so that we can get another horizontal arrangement is start getting some of our other horizontal arrangements set up so the first thing we need to do is to put labels in our top two boxes these are gonna be for our first number and our second number if you want to do more than two numbers in adding subtracting multiplying or dividing just add another horizontal arrangement and put a label and a text box in it, which is my next step. Adding the good old-fashioned text box. Here we go. So, after doing that, just to get a little bit more organized, I'm going to go into my horizontal arrangements and my screen and center them. For this one, I'm going to center it horizontal in the center. And then for my horizontal arrangements, I'm going to center them vertically in the center so that the, uh, the, number, the labels are in the center instead of all the way at the top. Because I mean, it kind of looks kind of ridiculous in my opinion. But hey, that's up to you. So, next on our list of things to do is adding our two labels, which will be our answer and our actual answer. What I mean by that is one's going to say answer, just so people know where the answer's at. And then the one next to it is going to be the actual answer. Oh, I spelled answer wrong. Oopsies. I spelled it wrong again. Wow. Bad day, I guess. I really hope you guys are having a good, good, good day. Comment down below if you're having a good day. I just want to hear about it. It'll make my day better. And it'll make your day better because you're the best. And I love you because you're the best. Here we go. So next we need to add four buttons, which will be addition... Subtraction, multiplication, and division. Yeah. Then we need two more buttons, which will be our clear button or our reset the calculator button. And then our little fun button for that twist. We're going to name this one fun. And we're going to name button five clear. And the other ones, I'm just going to remember addition comes first, subtraction comes second. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these to a plus for addition a minus for subtraction, a asterisk for multiplication, because that's what number pads said to do, and a slash for division. Alright, and then text for number, for button five will be clear, and for button six, we're just going to put the good old-fashioned R for rojo epotitis. It's actually pronounced epotis. We googled it, me and my friend Ben. If you guys haven't met Ben yet, go check out my slither.io video. So down on below, just a little side note, down below there will be three links, one to my past gaming video if you want to check out the gaming side of my channel, and the other two links will be my tally counter tutorial for MIT App Inventor. Those are my first two tutorials though, so be warned, they could be a little iffy, don't know. But let me know what you guys think of them, because you're the best, right? Right, 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 right. Alright, so, we need to add blocks now, right? Right, here we go, let's add some blocks. So, first off, we're going to, uh oh, I think I forgot to do something. I did forget to do something. So I forgot to change the label 4 so that it says answer so I know which one to put the answer on. So we're going to change this one to say answer display. Now if you guys didn't know, if you haven't checked in the top left corner yet, calc, twist, names, like titles and stuff, you have to put an, uh, an underscore in. But when typing here, I don't think, oh no, it automatically put an underspace on it. That's okay. So there are no spaces in this, just in case you guys were wondering. So what we're going to do is when button one clicked, remember button one is our addition button, we're going to set answer display, the text of the answer display, so that, you know, so you can see the answer display. Oh, wait, oops. I clicked the wrong one. We're going to 
set answer display text. Remember, sets are the dark green ones, light green ones are what it is. So like, set the text, and then this is the text of it. Those are two completely different things. We're going to grab a math block. So what it is is MIT App Inventor knows the basics of how to work, like, functions for adding, subtracting, and all the operations. But it doesn't know how to do them if, with you just inputting numbers. You have to make a calculator or put that function in somewhere in your app. So I'm going to do this really quick. What I'm just going to do is copy and paste, change button 2, grab my text box out, switch this to, to, to subtract, subtraction. Yeah, subtraction. That's a I guess it's a hard word for me to say today, but that's whatever. Um, if you guys didn't know, there's this little settings button on the adding one where you can put in another number. And then for the um, subtraction one where there isn't a little um, gear, and sub I think it's subtraction and division. Yes, it's subtraction and division. You can just add another uh, multiplication and division. Yeah, subtraction and division. You can just add another subtraction box in with it. What I mean by that is you would just take say you're doing multiplication where I just put text box 2 you put another multiplication box simple as that right 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 good to go yes yay alright so let's just finish up the division here simple stuff and then we're gonna need to do button 5 oh something I did forget to do if you're doing the copy and paste method like I'm doing just go over here and ch with the drop down menu and change it to the button you want to use I think I got all my buttons set up correctly but hey we'll find out when we test it right so, next we need to organize. Always organize. Stay ever have everything organized. That's a big part of coding and everything. We're going to go and program our clear button. Bum, bum, bum. So, what this is going to do is set answer display text. Take a text box. Set it back to blank. Alright, so that's all our box. I will be right back. I'm going to add a screen over here for our little twist thing and then get the emulator set up so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll be right back, guys. Welcome back, guys. So here our emulator is doing its final little start up. What I added was... What did I add? I added a screen, and I think that's about all I added. So what this other screen will be is our twist. So give the emulator just one more second to get all fired up. The design should pop up here any second. Right here. Here we go. So I didn't change the hint for text box one, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is just input a number. Let's say, what's today's date? Today is the 27th of April, so we're going to go 04. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You have to type on the screen. 4, and then 27. And let's add those. What is 4 plus 27? 4 plus 27 is 31. So add, answer, 31. Very cool. And then clear sets your answer back to zero but does not clear the numbers so we're gonna go into our blocks and the emulator is live so what we're gonna do is have it set text box one dot text or hint text box one dot text to control C control V no control C control V text box 2 text to null. So let's open our emulator back up right here and we're going to hit clear again and ta-da! They're all clear. So let's uh, do some simple numbers now. We're going to do 5 and 1 minus. We get 4. Now we're going to do 5 times 1. We get 5. five uh, let's do 10 divided by 5 which should come out to be 2 I think. Yes, it's two. All right, so we're good to go with that part. I will be right back while I get to the other screen, guys. Hey, guys, before we switch, I forgot that I need to add some buttons. So when that fun button is clicked, that R, we're going to have it open the second screen, which name is Twist. And we're also going to add a little procedure here called Twist. So what this is, whenever one of the buttons is clicked, if, so only if it's there, if the answer is equal to, to 1018, which is my birthday, October 18th, then it will open the screen. So we're going to switch over to the screen really quick, and here we go. So on this screen, we're going to have a little game that I like to call Whack-A-Mole. It's also known as Sprite Smash for anyone taking a class. So what we need to get in here first is a layout. 
and then we need to get a canvas in here with an image sprite. Like I said, sprite smash. So what we're going to do is set the canvas to height percent 90. Yeah, no, 90 is a little bit too big. So we're going to have the height set to 80. Next, we're going to set the width to fill parent, which means it'll just fill the screen. And then we're going to center this screen. All right, there we go. I thought, oh no, we settled it vertical, not horizontally. All right, so here we go. Now we need to add our button at the bottom, which will be return. Return. And now we need to edit our image sprite, which actually, I'm not going to use an image sprite for this. I'm going to do something a little bit simpler with this, which will be a ball. This ball, I'm going to change the radius to 20. Yeah, it's a decent sized ball. And then the button will be return. I think that is all we need to do. Yes, that is all we need to do. So what we're going to do first is make a procedure called move. Oh wait, I forgot one thing in the designer. We need to add a clock with an interval of 500. Actually, no, we're gonna make it a little bit faster than that. So the interval will be, hmm, 200. So we're gonna go into our blocks now to do. All right, so when clock dot timer. Oh no, you can't do that in a procedure. Um, move to do. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I haven't done this in a while, being honest with you guys. So, I think what we're going to do is... Oh, yes. So, move. We do need to find a when clock timer do. Alright. So, we're not going to use a procedure move. When clock dot timer go. So, whenever the clock is going, we're going to... Da, 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 da. Call ball to move to X, Y. And what we're going to do is this. Set ball 1, move 2. We need a math block for this, guys. So what we're going to do, actually, we need a random integer block. Sorry about that. From 1 to a random number. So just like a random number, which will be the canvas width. So that's how big our screen where the ball that the ball is on. Our canvas width. If I can find it right here. Height width width. Right there. Canvas one width width minus the ball. Radius. This will move the ball to anywhere from one to wherever it ends up that. We're gonna Control V, Control C this, so copy paste, we're going to change the Y to the height, because remember, X is the one that goes across the bottom, and Y is the one that goes up and down. So and so whenever that clock goes off, the ball is going to move. We also, we have to put one more thing down below next to our return button, which will be a, la two labels, actually. So we're going to put one label there, and one label right there. So this first label is going to be score. And our second label is going to be blank. But I'm going to rename this over in the components section, score. Just so I know that that's the score that I'm changing. So what I'm going to do is, when ball dot one touched, so every time, every, anytime someone touches the ball, we're going to have it set score dot text. Oh. Uh, set score dot text to its current number plus one. So I'm going to do go back to the designer and change the score number to zero so that it's currently zero because then it has a starting number. So what this should do is when it's all fired up and going is every time you touch the ball it's going to um, add one to the score. And just so that we can get back to the calculator pretty easily, we're going to do an if-then block. So this only happens if the thing is there. And if it's not there, then it's going to go down and just add the score. So if score, I could also turn this into an else block and not worry about putting the block down there, but I don't really want to do that. So if, now we need an equal, if score.text, control C, control V on that score.text, 
is equal to control C, control V on that number, and I could just type on the side over here, like something, and it would give me that number. But if score is equal to 10, sometimes that doesn't work. I don't know why, it's just kind of weird like that. If score is equal to 10, then control, open another screen with screen name. What is the screen name? Screen 1. Uh oh. Screen 1. And that doesn't work. So we got to go down over here, get a text box, and put that as screen 1. Now I'm going to fire up the emulator again really quick, guys. Be right back. Welcome back, guys. So if you look at the right-hand side of the screen, that's where I move the emulator so we can see this, the main window and the emulator at the same time. If you see, you can notice that our ball is moving a little bit too fast. So we're going to change the clock interval to 400. And if you see, our screen will load really quick. Give it one second to see how much slower the ball is moving out. So let's try and click this ball. See? So now every time I click the ball, it adds a point. So let's see if when we get to 10, like we said, if it changes it. Wow. This is actually a lot harder than it looks. Um, just so that I can finish this a little bit quicker. Set the ball radius up to 50, make the ball a little bit bigger, and it should start bouncing around really big now. Uh-oh, why did it reset my score? Oh, because the screen reloaded. That kind of sucks. Um, ah, this is really hard, guys. I, I forgot how hard Sprite, Sprite Smash was. All right, so here we go. When I hit 10, it changed my screen back over to... Bum, bum, bum. The main screen. All right, so what was the number? We picked 1018, right? So let's say... 1018, so 1018. Let's go over to numbers right here. So we're going to go 1017 plus 1. And on your phones or whatever you're doing this on, your keyboard should not switch like that when you go from number to number. But that's whatever. We're going to hit add, and the answer was 1018. Now it pops us to our other screen, and the, ca and the keyboard goes away when you click done, of course. And we can do it all over again. And also, I believe, return the return. Oh, I didn't program the return button. All right, so when button one dot click, control, open another screen, control V, control V, open screen one. So when the return button is clicked, it should return me to screen one. Yeah, here we go. So give it a second to load, and we're going to see if the R button actually works for our twist. Um, let me know what you guys think of this twist or if I should add something different because there's a lot of things you could add to this separate screen and I could expand on Sprite Smash. Comment down below if you want me to expand on how to make a very in-depth, fun Sprite Smash game or Simon Says game. You never know. So here we go. And yes, the R fun button does work. Um, that is it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. You are the absolute best. Um, comment down below what you thought of this if you want to. And um, what you guys want to see in the next MIT App Inventor tutorial, my next video coming out should be, uh, well, another Slither.io video, because that's all the rage right now, and most likely my Black Desert daily routine, and whatever MIT App Inventor tutorial you guys request. I'm still working on that race car app that I promised you guys. I'm sorry that it keeps getting pushed back, but it is a pain in the butt, just being completely honest with you guys. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. You are the best um if no one tells you they love today i do and don't forget to subscribe uh have a good day bye